pretty much the everyday farmer if you would or uh, pretty much it's into that form so yeah this would have been a fisherman a farmer or any of the lower class of warriors because you would have your noblemen you would have your warriors your everyday warriors which are known as the thingy and then you would also have the lower class levy units now, these guys would have been an everyday uh, person and such. These guys would have been, uh, well, you pretty much guessed it. A, uh, typically the, well, the home defense unit. Now, there are many accounts that actually state that these warriors would have been used to defend the homestead or such like that. In fact, they would have hardly ever been used in battle Unless, say, for example, an invading army attacks you. So, yeah. Now, in doing so, though, there are many accounts that also stated that they would have also been used in campaigns in order to fight against, well, say, another group of people. Say, for example, if there are more Finian warriors or more Irish-born warriors, then in doing so, of the lower class, I would be told by my liege lord to or by my noble lord to come and fight alongside him. And in doing so, I might earn a little bit of reputation and be welcomed into the ranks of the Finian. So, yeah. Now, what equipment did these warriors use? Well, that's the thing. There's very little information, especially prior before the first century. Our best estimation is that these warriors would have borne very little equipment and very little armor. The only armor they probably would have worn or used would have been that of a shield. Now, their shields, though, would have been made out of wicker and hide. 
in doing so, if you all know how these shields were, think of the Bronze Age. In doing so, majority of their weapons would actually be bronze, not steel or iron. Now you may be afraid you already saying, Oh, Templar, you're cheating then. Well, that's because there's not much of it, uh, well, designs or evidence that actually shows of equipment they would use. So I can't exactly go in and, you know, buy this equipment or not, seeing to the fact I don't know, or in fact we don't know, of the majority of equipment. So, yeah. Uh, but to any of y'all who don't know much about the Irish warriors in history, this is going to be covering from the 1st to 3rd century, and then hopefully soon we will get into the later periods, such as during the time of the 3rd to 5th or probably 6th and 7th century. Then we'll go on to the later Dark Ages, known as the time of the Viking Age. And we'll probably continue on from there. So, yeah. So, what was the everyday equipment that these warriors would have pretty much used? Well, you pretty much end up seeing me using spears. That would be the most obvious. Now, though, one weapon, though, that they would probably also use in major form would also be this. A club. Now, before anyone starts saying, Oh, Templar, it's a club. It's not going to do anything. Here's the thing. If you get whacked in the head enough, hard enough, you can kill somebody with a war club. In fact, take the infamous uh, tale of Kuhalan, who used a club, a, a sporting club, to kill a hound. Now, this is not a normal hound. This is an Irish wolfhound. And these guys are big, and these guys will pretty much bite. And it's actually stated that Kuhalan beat him with one stroke to the head. Now, that's saying something. So, this is a dog's head, and it's going to be a slightly denser than a human's skull, so, yeah. Now, though, this is a finished model of what it could end up looking like. Uh, Non-finished models would look more like this. Now, I can already hear me if you already say, well, that's a stick. Here's the thing. Just because it looks like a stick doesn't mean it's just a stick. In fact, Wooden clubs are probably the most dangerous weapons you can get hit with on the battlefield. In fact, I could have carved this from a certain birch tree or some sort of tree, and in doing so, made a said club. In fact, this already has a fierce looking head on the top, so just imagine if I took it and whacked somebody in the head with it. It will still be a dangerous weapon. In fact, listen to how dangerous this is. How it's Now, I don't know if y'all can hear that, but that is scary. And just imagine hearing that on the battlefield. As well, this one is slightly longer than my, uh, my, uh, club. And in doing so, I could probably use two hands with this. So, this could still be a very dangerous weapon on the battlefield. So just imagine getting hit by one of these, especially in your naked noggin or even on your limb. Now, here's the thing. I hear many people already saying, well, but Templar... What's a club going to do to a limb? Here's the thing, what wouldn't it do? It will break bone. In fact, how many of y'all have actually been hit by a baseball bat or have hit somebody with a baseball bat? And you pretty much understand my point. It's just a piece of wood, but yet it still has a lot more devastating power. So, that's saying something. Now, their shields, their shields would have actually been uh, another story. Now, they would have used round shields, yes. However, they will also use oval shields, or small circular shields. There are some accounts that say they use bucklers, but I don't know if that one's true or not. Other equipment that the Irish levy would have used would have also been this, a dagger. Now, maybe people would see this as a sword. Here's the thing, it actually isn't. It's just a long, gated dagger. Now, uh, most of the time, though, this would be as long as I could get my afford. So, yeah. Now, I mean, you already are saying, Oh, Duplar, why not a sword? Here's the thing, swords are expensive. How expensive, you might ask? Here's the thing, the cost of a sword, especially back in that time, that would have been the average cost of a Lamborghini. So, yeah, think that one through. So, the majority of my weapons, though, would be a spear, javelin, and a club. And that's just for melee. For other weapons, which would be more common, would actually be the bow and arrow. Reason being, one, the bow and arrow was cheap to manufacture, and in doing so, I was a farmer, but yet I can also be a hunter on the everyday field. So, this equipment I am wearing is 
as accurate as I can get to the historical depictions. Because there are accounts from the Romans that stated that these people dressed in accounts of light mobile type units. And doing so, build the ranks up. Now I hear maybe already asking though, uh, the Templar, what about their, did they use axes? No. Irish warriors did, I, the Irish never used axes unless it was a case, say for example, they were being attacked on their homestead and they had no other case of self-defense. So yeah, use the axe in testing case. But the majority of the time, it was a spear, club, and a dagger. That's it. So yeah. Now, I hear me even already asking, oh, but don't where's your helmet? Where's your armor? As I said, I'm a farmer. I can't afford those things. In doing so, I have to survive for me and my family. But how about we get right into the video, shall we? Flan for
This was actually, they were nicknamed the light foot of the Irish. Now, there is some accounts also to state that the majority of the warriors in battle always used javelins and spears. In fact, at the very end of the tale of Cuchulain, there is a statement that always shows that they threw javelin after javelin at each other and came in at each other with spears and fought each other and Cuchulain finished off his old friend using the diabolicum, which is apparently a technique that apparently has thorns protrude from the body, which I don't even know if that one uh, makes any sense, so yeah. Uh, but the Celtic spearheads were by far one of the most horrifying, and most of these would have made out of bronze, so let's think that one through. Now, the term javelin after javelin at each other stated that these men would have uh, even had bundles of javelins in their hands while, while they held their shield. Now there are also accounts that even stated that when a warrior threw his javelin at another opponent, the opponent could end up catching it and then in return threw it right back. So just imagine how horrifying of a battle that would have been. You end up throwing your javelin, but then you end up hearing that the javelin's getting thrown right back at you. So. Uh, yeah, that's uh, kind of scary to think about that. Now, as you all saw, though, most of the time I was not using an oval shield, I was mostly using the round shield, and I rarely used my club. That's because I had to rely mostly on this weapon. This is my weapon. It is meant for defense. It is meant for also offense. This is a last-ditch weapon if I have a, no other choice. Now, y'all probably also saw with me, with the bow, I was kind of struggling. It's cold outside, and unfortunately, weather, the cold weather is not the best for the fingers nor the toes. In fact, it's like 40-something degrees in my uh, 
Celtic footwear is gone soaked right now and it's freezing, so hopefully I don't lose a toes. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, but as well, y'all, I also forgot to mention, they would also use, uh, instead of also the uh, bow, there are accounts that even shepherd herders that were in the mix of the levy units could have actually used slings. Slings were the most ancient of weapons. There are also accounts of a crooked wood. Now, I don't know what that means per se, because this one was written down by Romans, but it stated that a young boy was practicing with a crooked piece of wood and threw it. Now, this sounds like something like a boomerang, if I'm not mistaken. But we don't know much evidence of what it could have been. All we know is that apparently he threw it and it came right back. So that sounds like a boomerang to me. Uh, but before anyone starts saying that, oh, boomerangs are native only to Australia, here's the thing. No, they're not. They are actually all over the place. Here in Americas, in Europe, Africa, and everywhere. So before you all think, oh, it's only native to Australia, it's not. The same can be said about the sling, the bow, the spear, any type of weapon. They were used originally for hunting use, then they were later used for killing. So, yeah. <laughs> but that's pretty much the thing about it. But hopefully you like this video, y'all. Stay tuned for more, and hopefully very soon we will get into the Celtic Vigne, or the Irish Vigne very soon, and then maybe we will get into the Irish Werewolf, or Wolfman, of the, I of the Emerald Isle. So, and then, finally, on to the Celtic Noble. Anyways, guys, hope to see y'all in the next one. Like and subscribe for more. Hope to see y'all in the very soon. And if y'all have any type of warriors from history y'all want me to look up, please let me know in the comments below. We will be going back into other videos, per se, other series. We might even go back to the Welsh. We might go back to the Scots. We might go back to the Germans and such and do our how-to videos from there as well. Anyways, guys, like and subscribe for more. Hope to see y'all in the next one. And have a great day. Mm -hmm.